Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. Come and allow God to unleash your potential, purpose, and destiny. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Him and through the blood of Jesus. Because of His unconditional love, hallelujah, He sent His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ, to die so He can reconcile Himself to you. to come and be a part of our glory divine family you never choose jesus he chose you welcome to glory divine network tv with your host apostle ryan suknanan let's get ready to listen to the divinely inspired word of god I pray. In my heart would sing to you. raise our hands and say Lord God Almighty we come before your throne of grace through no other so, name but the name of Jesus we thank you for this opportunity God Hallelujah. that we can be in your presence we pray for the word that will be coming from this pulpit this morning we pray Father God for the lives to be transformed in all shapes sizes in all forms Father we pray for the online viewers as well as those in attendance we ask you, Spirit of the living God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, those that do not know you as Lord and Savior, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to intervene in their lives today. Let whatever is ministered, whatever we do today, let it be to glorify you. We are not yet to judge one another, but we are yet to lift up the name that is above every name. Father, many of us have tried a lot of things in the world. But we come to understand that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the light. And no one comes to the Father except through you. Guide us and lead us in the way that we should go. I commit the worship team into your hands. I commit the word into your hands. And I pray, dear God, that whatever we do, let us do it to glorify you in spirit and in truth. And the church of God says, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, I greet you all in the mighty, powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On behalf of uh, the first family, Apostle Ryan and First Lady Nisha, we'd love to welcome each and every one of you to Glory Divine World Ministries, a place to call home. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to those that are online visiting us for the first time. If you are here, we'd love to welcome you in the presence of the Lord. Come and give yourself a round of applause for being in the house of God. Amen. Are you ready to rejoice in the presence of the Lord? Come on, let me see those hands. Are you ready to rejoice in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. If there's a person next to you and he didn't raise his hand, tell him, brother, sister, the Lord, say the Lord is about to do something in your life. You might not see it, but believe me, it shall manifest. Come on, don't be shy. Tell your neighbor, you might not see it, but it shall manifest. Remember the Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. Tell your neighbor, this is the day. This is the day. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, today. Come on, don't be shy if you're ready to glorify the Lord. Let me see you raise your hands to Jesus. Come on church, don't be shy. We are in the presence of an almighty God. Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Come on church, let's go. Let's clap our hands to Jesus. Come on, come on. Here we go. Say God. God is my 
fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. It. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Come on, sing it. Join what I say. Heading in our burdens, covering our shame. He is overcome. Yes, He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Come on, everybody. Say, I will live. Say, I will live. I will not die. And resurrection power of love, I love in me when I am in Jesus' name. Come on, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame. Say, I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ, the life in me, and I am free in Jesus' name.
Come on, somebody give God praise. Come on, church, I want you to sing with me. Let us acknowledge our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're just going to sing the one verse together. Is everybody ready? We're just going to say, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. Everybody say, God is fighting. Say, God is fighting for us. That cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out. Shout it out. Can somebody shout for Jesus? Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. Are you blessed to be in the house of God this morning? Are you blessed, church? I know a lot of you guys are shy. I know, I know that. A lot of you guys are shy. But you know, the person that is standing next to you is your brother, is your sister. Remember that this is, this is a slogan in the church. It says, glory divine is a place to call home. So I don't know about you, but in my house, I talk to my wife. I don't just stand next to her, I talk to her. So when I ask you to talk to your neighbor, that is your brother, that is your sister that is next to you. Look at your brother and look at your sister, if you'd be so bold. Say, brother, God loves you. Don't be shy. Say, God loves you. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, give yourselves a round of applause. Come on, let's continue as we rejoice in the presence of God. Everybody, let's go. I want to see you dance in the presence of the Lord. And once again, this is your house. If you want to dance here, come forth and dance. Don't be shy. Say. What's your team? Are you ready? Here we go!
That young man was here dancing in the presence of the Lord. I used to go clubbing. I was a night crawler. And I'm dancing now for the Lord. So if you are standing there, if you are in the crowd, let's dance for the Lord. Remember, we are in the Spirit. We're not longer of the Spirit. We are in the Spirit of God. So if you are here, let's dance for God. Don't be shy. Don't be shy to dance for the Lord. Even if you are standing there, let's dance and enjoy in the presence of the Lord. Are you ready? I can't hear you, church. Are you ready? Let's dance. Come on, everybody. Yo! Here we go. I'm waiting for you guys. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Let's go.
Church, you may take your seats in the presence of God. Amen. I see we still have a lot to learn, eh? Amen. You know, you need to understand something, church. I learned in this church that all old things have passed away. All things in Christ have become new. So when I was crucified by friends, family, and the whatnots, I, when I used to do this, used to do that, used to do that, God through the apostle reminded me who I am in him. So don't be shy to dance in front of the presence of the Lord. The Bible says we are the light of the world. We, you, point yourself, say, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. Through Christ Jesus. Amen. One, one more time, give yourself a round of applause for being in the house of God. <laughs> Church, before we go into tithe and offering, I know you love that. Tithe and offering, I know you love it. Say, neighbor, I know you love it. You just don't want to say it. Yes, I know. I know. Amen. Uh, is there anyone joining us here for the first time? We'd love to welcome you in the presence of the Lord. Can you please stand? We'd love to welcome you on behalf of our apostle. We have our family over there. Can we welcome them? If you are here for the first time, don't be shy. We'd love to welcome you. Amen. Amen. Our brother over there, can we welcome him? Come on, church. Look at that lovely hairstyle. I used to have a hairstyle like that when I was so young. My, wow, my wife will vouch for that. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Are you ready, church? Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, it is good to give. Now, my scripture reading church is found in the book of Genesis 26, from verse 1, reading forward. It says, there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the day of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistine, to Gegur. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt, live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. Hallelujah. For you and your descendants, I will give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, and I will make your descendants multiply at the, as, as the stars of the heaven, and I will give you I will give your descendants all these lands, and in your seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commands, my statutes, my instructions, my everything, Abraham kept it. So, verse 6, so Isaac dwelled in Gerah. My script, my, the title of this message this morning is Obeying God's Instructions. Amen. This passage of scripture, as I read it, remind Isaac of the promise that was made to his father Abraham. God presented the same promise in return for Isaac's obedience. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 22, then Samuel said, Does the Lord take pleasure in burnt offerings? And in sacrifices, as much as he does in obedience, certainly obedience is better than sacrifice. Turn to the person on the other side, tell them obedience is better than sacrifice. Church, at times we may question God because you are not always in the position to give because of the financial situation that you are in. I know at times it's very difficult. We question the promises that was made to Abraham and Isaac in this passage of scripture. I want to remind you of something that the Bible teaches us. It said that we are descendants of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And God's promises are yes and amen. Turn, turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, I am in that lineage. Now, in the book of James 4, verse 7 to 8, it says, So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will free from you. 
come close to God and know God and now God will come close to you. Hallelujah. So declare this promise of God over your life, over your family, if you have a business, over the church, over every area of your life. Remember who you are. Remember what you are in Christ. Because through the word, we understand that God has given us these privileges. Many of us are not utilizing it because you think that, no, that is not for me. That is for the person next to me. That is for my neighbor. That is for John. That is for Peter. That is for Paul. No, it is for you. Confess it to yourself this morning. Say, that is my promise. Those promises that God made to Isaac and to Abraham are mine. Take it on. Don't let it be by the wayside. Because the enemy will come and steal it from you. Tell yourself, these promises are for me. In closing, church, in the book of Joshua 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but, it shall med- and, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written. Listen to that. To do all that is written. So now, Joshua is telling us here that, you know what? Everything that has been presented to us through the word of God, it is yours Take it. Do not hesitate and tell yourself again, it's not mine. It is yours. Understand that this morning. Then, for then, you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. I want you to read Joshua 1, 8 at home. And, pro- and speak over yourself. Because declare it. Because you are a child of God. You are of the lineage of Christ. That you must never forget. And I trust that you are blessed with the word. Shall we all stand in the presence of the Lord? I'd love to ask Elder Dale to pray for the offering and the tithe this morning. And for those of you that are online, the banking details will appear on screen. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Thank you that you do not change, O God, and neither do your promises and your principles. So this morning, O God, as we as we obey your instructions, O God, as we sow our tithe and our offering, O Lord, we thank you that these finances will be used for the extension of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Church, church, you may, you may make your way forward, amen. Kanyena we go see a me. Chocolate, 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just can you just take your seats just for a minute? You know, I don't want to steal nobody's thunder, né? but I saw us. Young man, when I came to this church, you know, he grew up into to be such a fine, fine young man. And you know, I would de definitely say this is this is uh, a time when we need to acknowledge and thank God for everything that He's done in our lives. So, but before I do that, l let us take on testimonies. Amen. Let us take on testimony. Is there anyone in the house of God with a glad heart that want to share what the Lord has done in their lives? Praise the Lord. It's such an awesome time that we could acknowledge God for His goodness and His grace and His mercy. Is there anyone in the house of God that want to share? Amen. Praise the Lord. Can, I, can we welcome our brother? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Bru, I just thank God for you. Paul said, stir up the gift that's within you. And what you did today was something that, uh, that was actually really good. I have a witness in the house as well. When the doctors say that it, it can't be done, when doctors fail, I have a witness here that actually prayed with me and said, you know what, you will rise and walk up from this bed. When the doctor says, you will not get up from this bed, you won't walk. There's nothing we can do. My witness is here. Today I can stand before. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Let us not. Amen. Our sister, can we welcome her? Praise the Lord. Come on, church. Let us welcome her in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. I just want to make a declaration this morning. The word of God says in Isaiah 5 that the word of God will not return void unto him, but it will accomplish what it was sent forth to do, and it will prosper there in it. And in Psalm 84 says that, I will not die, but I will live to declare the works of the Lord. And I want to declare that over my son this morning, that he will not die, but he will live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Our brother Cabello, church, can we welcome him? Amen. Amen. I will not be doing justice if I don't stand here and testify. Amen. You know, this week I had, I think the best week. You know, a friend of mine sent me an email. Before I could even start working, I read his email and he says, you know, there's a managerial position that will be perfect for you. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, no, just apply. And I was like, ah, my man, you know, you are something else. Because this is a brother I fellowship at work. And we mostly talk about the things of God. We don't just talk worldly things. And it was not just him. Somebody else sent me another position to apply for. And I'm asking myself, God, what are you doing? I'm confused. Which one should I apply for? And which one should I leave? But I want to thank God for that. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. His promises are yes and amen. Church, shall we all stand in the presence of God? Amen. Can we raise our hands as we thank the Lord for uh, all that he has done? You know, 
even the fact that you got up this morning, it's, it's something to be grateful for. It is something to praise the Lord and thank Him for that too. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord, cause the rain. We are in your presence, let it rain, cause the rain to fall on me. We are in your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Let it rain, God, cause the rain to fall on me. We're in your presence. Let it rain, oh God, cause your rain to fall on me. Lift your voice to the Lord. We're in your presence. Let it rain, God, let it rain. We need the rain, cause the rain. Lord, we need it to fall on me. We need your presence. Let your rain fall, God. We need your rain right now, God. Let it fall to fall. We need your presence. Father, let your rain fall. Let it rain, God. Let it rain. Let it fall on us, God. We read your prayer. Let it rain, my God. Let your rain fall on me. To fall. We read your prayer. Father, let it rain, let my God. It rain. Let it rain, God. Let it fall on me. We read your prayers. Let it rain, my God. Let your rain fall right now. To fall. Open the floodgates, 
in abundance cause your rain to fall on me open the floodgates in abundance cause your rain to fall on me open open the floodgates in abundance cause your rain to fall on me open the floodgates in abundance cause your rain to fall on me one more time open the floodgates in abundance cause your rain to fall on me that are online right now. Revive our spirit this morning, O oh God. Refresh us this morning. Pour new oil upon us this morning. Lift up every burden this morning. Every sorrow, every pain, every heartache, every sickness, every disease, every negative report, O oh God. Lord, fill us with joy, peace. Lord, let your hand be upon us. Let your prosperity, O oh God, be upon us. 
cancel every works of the enemy. Every evil plan be cancelled, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We apply your precious blood upon everybody that is here. Your blood that never loses its power. Let your presence, your glory, your anointing rest upon every person. Whatever your children are going through, my God, that is contrary to your word. We neutralize its power right now. Set your children free, O oh God. I declare and I decree and I prophesy victory that everyone will be an overcomer, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. None, O oh God, shall die before the time. Every person shall live long to see your glory. They shall walk in your blessing, my God, in the name of Jesus. I commit this service into your hands. Holy Spirit, I give you preeminence. Touch every person. Touch those that are online. Touch those that are going to listen to this message later on, my God. Let there be a divine encounter. Let every ear be attentive, every heart receptive. Freshen them up, O God. No spirit of heaviness. That the seed of the word will grow and bear much fruit. That, Lord, that you will give instruction, direction, guidance, encouragement, conviction, O God, to your children. That none shall go the same way that they came in. They will receive answers to the questions, solutions to the problem, and direction, O God, to the confusion. I release them into your hands. Apply the blood of Jesus over them. And I commit them into your hands, O oh God. Have your own way. I commit myself as a minister of your word. Speak through me, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. Give yourself a hand to be in the presence of God. I know there's a race today and most of the roads are closed all over coming to the church but thank God that we almost still got a full house amen so let's give the Lord a hand hallelujah <clears throat> that is why it's good to leave a little bit early for the house of God uh, do you could you do you go at seven o'clock when you start at seven o'clock no you go there about five to seven how much more must we honor the house of God the living God the true and living God. That is why I leave early, so I'm here about 7 o'clock every day for the last 22 years that I run the church. So today we were coming on the M2 and the roads is all closed. I can't get here. I had to go to Newtown and that way every twist and turn to be here. But still I was here quarter past 7 in the morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. For the Lord you must... Take extra steps. Go the extra mile. Amen. Because God is faithful. Ask your neighbor, are you faithful? In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory. He's the boss of your boss. He's the source of everything. Everything that you need is from God. We've got to honor him. So there's two announcements that I'm going to make this morning before I get into the word of God. Number one announcement is that the Lord laid in my heart to make 200 of these bucket hampers, Christmas hampers, for the needy and the poor. So there's a lot of groceries that we're going to fit in here. We're going to buy groceries and fit in. So we are getting prices to buy 200 buckets. So we will, at least somebody will have some food for Christmas. And uh, so I want to open it up to the church. We are getting prices for buckets. If you know that people got buckets like this, is fine. You can bring it also. Uh, neat, clean buckets. If you know somebody is selling buckets cheap, let us know. So the cheapest we got is at the moment 18 rand per bucket. So 200 will cost us about 4,000 rand. And uh, we want to put at least 15 items in it. 
needy items inside there. So we want to leave it to the church. Starting this Tuesday, you can donate. Even if you're buying groceries, just buy two extra canned food or one, maybe a packet of tea bags or, you know, something that is not perishable. And just bring it, we will have a box there and uh, you can keep it. And I'm looking at about two, full 200 will be about 22,000 rand the groceries. But if you can also help us, we'll be much, much appreciated if you can start bringing in uh, whatever. Just buy an extra and just bring it and we will separate it that everybody gets equal in the mighty name of Jesus. The second announcement is I want my son to come forward and uh, hallelujah and uh, the future, future wife of his to come forward. Amen. Right? It's a gentleman, eh? <laughs> Amen, you can stand here. Amen, they have been going out for six years. They've been going out. He drives all the way to Rustenburg to see her. Amen, because she's, she's in the medical field and uh, I think this is the last. Eh? So next year she'll be back this side. So for six years they have been courting. And yes, on, on Friday they proposed. So he did it in a very good, uh, you know, he even rendered an item for her and went onto his knees and gave the ring and very romantic, amen. So I just want to make it official to the church, amen. So everything has been done above board. They had the boundaries when they were courting, strict boundaries. Because I'm a pastor and I have to bring my family in the ways of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. So now they are officially proposed. And the big date will be announced. So I want to congratulate you son. Well done. And uh, my daughter. I take her as a daughter because she grew up in front of me. And going to be my daughter-in-law also. In the mighty name of Jesus. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. All right. So I want to get into the word of God now. Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. Glory to God. I'm going to be continuing on the theme divine restoration. And I believe that before this year end is over that everyone will be restored in Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the topic is uh, the title, the result of divine positioning part four. The Bible says in Joel 2 verse 25... And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. I want to welcome the online viewers, share this message, and I believe that God will bless you. So God is promising in this verse that he will restore his children. The word of God, Jesus is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. What happened yesterday still applies today. Hallelujah. So the word restore is the word shalom. It means uh, a man to describe peace, completeness, healing, restoration, retrib retribution, and repayment. He will restore the years that these insects have destroyed. And if you take today's uh, scenario... Insects can represent anything. A man can, in your life can be an insect. A, a woman in your life can be an insect. Destroying your life. Hallelujah. Your boss at your work can be an insect. Hallelujah. Amen. Your neighbor can be an insect that is destroying your peace. And God is saying that he will intervene and he will restore in the mighty name of Jesus. So I prophesy the intervention of God upon your life this year before, before the year ends. Hallelujah. So our October theme was divine restorations. And as we continue, and I'm going to close on this next week, 
We were taking Elisha and Elijah as an example where Elisha was divinely positioned to receive a double portion of anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible clearly says in Isaiah 10 verse 27, the anointing destroys yoke. So when you are positioned to receive an anointing, the anointing can destroy the yoke of poverty, it can destroy the yoke of sickness, it can destroy anything in your life that is stopping you from walking in God's best. Amen. Say, I receive the anointing. Say, I'm divinely positioned in the mighty name of Jesus. So the first test that Elisha went through was the test of Gilgal. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Kings 2 verse 1 and 2, And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah to heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elisha said, then Elijah said to Elisha, said to Elisha, Stay here please, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So one of the meanings, and I'm just recapping before I start today's message. One of the meanings of the word Gilgal is circle. Elisha followed Elijah and stopped his life from moving in circles. He passed the test of obedience. And that is the first test that Elisha went through. And if your life is going into circle, look at your life and see if you are past the test of obedience. Are you obeying God? Are you obeying his commandment? Are you obeying his structure? Are you faithful in certain things? Uh, amen. Have you got a covenant uh, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the government of God, the local government, which is the church? Or are you just a visitor in the church? The second test is Bethel. Genesis 28, verse 16 to 17. So the second test is Bethel. Stay with me. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Bethel means the house of God. So here we see Elisha passed the spiritual test. His priorities was in order. Is your priority in order? If you want God to move in your life, is he at the top of your agenda? Hallelujah. Is he the CEO of your life? Is he the master? Is he also the Lord and Savior of your life? Hallelujah. Uh, to me, the Lord is the CEO of my life. He comes first to me, then comes my family, and then comes everybody else. Hallelujah. So my service to God is utmost importance. If I can report to work to my boss at 7 o'clock, I will make sure half past 6 I am in the house of God. I will not walk into the house of God half past 7. Hallelujah. That's disobedience, disrespect, and dishonor to the highest God in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The third test is Jericho. I started last week with this test and getting over your opposition. Jericho has many meanings, but one of the things that touched me is the opposition that the children of God faced at the walls of Jericho. So we will continue the walk of Jericho this morning. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 4, Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The word of God says in Joshua chapter 6, verse 10, now Joshua had commanded the people saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you shout. 
then you shall shout. And I spoke last week and I said many people are shouting, but the Lord did not tell you to shout. Hallelujah. And God is speaking to you this morning that God will give you a testimony at the right time and that testimony will be your shout. Hallelujah. May you, every person that is seated here, may you have a shout that is coming from the mouth and the heart of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So a test of submission. Here we see a test of submission. Submit to the leader Joshua. Joshua says to the people, Hallelujah, mark your monto. Keep quiet and just walk around the walls of Jericho. Some people will say, Oh, my leader has gone cuckoos. He's gone mad. Oh no, but the people submitted to the leader. Hallelujah. And did not question the leader. And they trusted that the leader is listening from God. Because sometime an instruction will Will make no sense to you but you got to chip still and follow that instruction when you follow that instruction your breakthrough will come hallelujah amen a test of trusting and obeying the leader hallelujah follow a confused instruction march don't gossip don't talk hallelujah amen trust your leader that God has appointed amen a test of endurance seven times you must walk six time you must walk and on the seven time walk seven time around the wall a test of endurance not just one Sunday you come to church and the next Sunday and then nothing happens hallelujah you skip to another church you skip to another pastor you skip to another prophet God does not work that way hallelujah amen God wants your feet to be planted on a solid ground God is looking at the agenda of your heart the motive of your heart and he wants to see faithfulness and stability if you can see maturity faithfulness and stability he will open the heaven upon you you and your prayers will be answered hallelujah Joshua chapter 6 verse 1 the Bible says now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel none went out and none came in it was a stop sign it was a gate that was closed on the children of God hallelujah amen so when we look at Jericho nothing could go into and nothing could go out hallelujah it was closed it was shut it was fortified hallelujah amen man could not penetrate that gate man could not penetrate that wall we needed supernatural intervention and this morning I pray that supernatural intervention come to you in every aspect of your life that human endeavors cannot penetrate in the mighty name of Jesus so God said to Joshua the men of war will not stand a chance against this wall of Jericho hallelujah he said bring the ark and bring the covenant the ark of the covenant surround the city and keep moving around it with the priest and the ark don't talk for six days gather the priest those appointed as God's representative the ark is the symbol and the strength and the power and the presence of God hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus I pray before December is over that you'll have an encounter with God hallelujah that you will you will experience the kabod the manifested glory of God upon your life remember the glory of God fights for you hallelujah amen the anointing is when you have the anointing you'll still do the work under the anointing but when the glory the kabod comes on you the doors open like remote doors for you I pray you enter that dimension in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. So listen, God uses supernatural means to defeat your enemy. Amen. When God sent Moses to Egypt to destroy the Pharaoh and his army, he did not say to Moses, gather all the fighting men. No, he said, just take up your rod. Hallelujah. Take up your rod and go. I pray something in your hands, something in your life, God anoints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that will be an anointing stick or a whatever. Hallelujah. That wherever you go, your enemy shall fall. Hallelujah. Closed doors shall open up. Opposition shall be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. 
He said, take up your rod and go. God must have spoken to Joshua and said to him, don't mind the huge size of your challenges. Listen to me. I will give you a strategy to destroy every obstacle. I pray God gives you a divine strategy this morning. Hallelujah. One divine instruction and one divine strategy from God. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll promote you. Amen. We'll accelerate you in the mighty name of Jesus. We've got to trust. We've got to trust. We've got to trust that God is still God. Hallelujah. And he's still a supernatural God. Don't lose hope. Don't be fearful. Don't be uncertain when you look at an uncertain world. Hallelujah. Amen. God is still certain, he's still on the throne, and he's still, hallelujah, is a miracle working God. Let's give him a hand, hallelujah. So, he says to Joshua, just go around the city with my presence. Go around the city with my presence and my representatives, my pastors that I have chosen. Hallelujah. Go around the city six times. On the seven time, hallelujah. On the seven day, hallelujah. Go around it seven times and let my pastors that I have appointed blow the trumpets. Hallelujah. Amen. And when, you, when the trumpets blow, let the people shout and that shout will be a victory shout and every walls will crumble and I pray right now the walls that is stopping your blessing shall crumble right now the walls that stopping your breakthrough shall crumble right now the walls that stopping your healing shall crumble right now the walls that is stopping you getting married shall crumble right now the words the walls that is stopping your promotion shall crumble right now in the mighty name of Jesus and I give you a permission now to shout, to shout shout, shout the biggest shout, say the biggest loudest amen that you can ever say hallelujah, let the atmosphere change, let the demonic powers that is stopping your breakthrough right now burn by the fire of God, shout like you have never shouted before scream like you have never screamed before. Let the atmosphere change in your home, in your house, in your workshop, in your business, in your, in your working area, everywhere. Hallelujah. Let it change. Let your shout and your praises change the atmosphere. Bless you. Bless you, sister. Bless you, son. In the name of Jesus. So listen, church. No one was allowed to speak, to gossip, to complain. What was allowed to speak? The ark was allowed to speak. Hallelujah. The ark was going in the front. It was speaking on behalf of the children. God was speaking. The ark represented God. The presence of God. Sometime, hallelujah, we got to allow God to speak for us. We got to allow God to fight our battles, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because every time they were marching, six times they were marching. The first time they marched, the ark was there and the pastors were in the front, hallelujah, interceding. Uh, representatives of, of God hallelujah interceding for the people amen and and, and 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 calling upon God amen though they were not allowed to speak but supernaturally the ark the presence of God were destroying strongholds remember the walls of Jericho was not a physical battle if it was a physical battle, God should have said to Joshua, go get your army, go get whatever thing you need to blow this place down. And God said, no, you need pastors, you need priests, you need my presence. Hallelujah. So I believe there were altars in that place. When I say altars, I'm not talking about godly altars. There were evil altars, supernatural altars in that place. And every time that the priest and the pastors walked and the ark was in the front, there were some strongholds being broken. Hallelujah. Something was being broken in the atmosphere. That is why on the seventh time, everything was broken. And when they blew the trumpet, the walls fell. 
You know, sometimes you come into the church one, two time, your problem will not be solved. Hallelujah. Sometimes you've got to come into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Come and prostrate in the presence of God. Praise and worship. Be faithful in his house. And let God break every stronghold, the generational curses that is not only upon you now, that is coming from your bloodline, from your generations, from your grandfathers. Some of you are facing battles now that is in the atmosphere from your family tree hallelujah and you need the presence of God the glory of God to break and destroy so those things can crumble in the presence of God one two amens and one two hallelujahs is not gonna do it hallelujah it needs your heart it needs you to surrender it needs proper praise and worship it needs heartful dedication unto God obedience unto God and all also a covenant with the local church covenant with your pastor in the name of Jesus so that he can pray with you he can stand in the gap with you hallelujah so these strongholds can break so you can get employed you can get married you can get healed your husband can come home your wife will be obedient hallelujah your family will be restored your drug addict son will come home your drug addict daughter will come home that person some way want to commit suicide God will touch that person hallelujah it's only the ark the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus be divinely positioned hallelujah so the walls of Jericho it represents all the challenges you face every one of us seated here is facing challenges some challenges are fortified like the walls of Jericho why I say fortified because five chariots could travel on the walls of Jericho how thick it was unpenetrable hallelujah amen all your shouting all your screaming will not be able to overcome the walls of Jericho until or unless God says you to shout hallelujah amen I pray this message is getting into your heart hallelujah you need a covenant relationship with the priest and the ark that is what the Bible is telling us you got to have a covenant relationship with your priest and the ark hallelujah my last armor bearer I'm saying it online hallelujah because sometimes I get holy anger hallelujah 10 years was with me amen 10 years I I picked him up from the from the streets of Rivoli hallelujah as a gangster amen for 10 years we look after him in this place my wife looked after him we we seen to his needs whatever took him as a son amen and when they were expelling him from from uh, school I made sure I left everything and I spoke and I spoke and I spoke until they accepted him hallelujah 10 years, as soon as he got a job, didn't even resign, left and went away. How does that hurt people? Amen. When you invest in people, when you invest in people and they show you your back. And that is why sometimes you need God in your heart just to forgive and go on and go on and go I'm not talking about one people I'm talking about for the last 30 years I've invested in people I just give to people whatever I have accumulated amen 30 years of studies with so much of degrees in my back I just give people free of charge free of charge free of charge free of charge but sometimes church you need to have a covenant relationship a covenant relationship is what Elisha and Elijah is. Elijah told Elisha, no, you don't come with me. But Elisha said, I will not leave you. I will not leave you because I've got a job now. I will not leave you because I've got a promotion now. I will not leave you because I've got another opportunity. I have a covenant relationship with the house of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you've got to take a break, chill out, and think of the 95% good that the church has done to you. Hallelujah. 95% good that the pastor has done for you. But 5%, you will look for the 5% and magnify it and go all over the world and speak about the 5%. What about the 95%? Tell your neighbor, have a heart for God. Have a heart for his house. In the mighty name of Jesus. God wants his children to have a covenant relationship. 
a covenant. This is your home. This is your house. Amen. When you take glory divine as your house, you will stand for this church. You will stand for the local church. Hallelujah. For the leadership, not only me, for all the leadership in the mighty name of Jesus. Even the congregation, you will pick them up when they fall. Hallelujah. So some challenges, hallelujah, can only be overcome when you are in covenant Hallelujah. You must be in covenant. When you are in covenant with somebody, hallelujah, amen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes your way. Your covenant will be much more stronger than what you are experiencing. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So some challenges are fortified like the walls of Jericho. Nothing can bring it down unless you are in a covenant relationship with God. The Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God and the priest, hallelujah, when they stand with you, the grace that is upon their life, when it's impacted in your life, hallelujah, they pull you out of every pit and pull you out of every muck and mire and you are accelerated in your life and whatever has been and holding your bondage is destroyed by the power of God. You know, I know people that are just gypsies, Christian, moving from here, moving from there, moving, but their life is tattered and torn. And I know of people that are stable and consistent. Today they drive their own car. They've got a good marriage. They're living in their own house, free old house. They got a good position. Hallelujah. Amen. Because they are stable and they have a covenant with God. Tell your neighbor, stop hipping, skipping, and chipping. Get a covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Amen. All the prophets, you can run to every prophet in the world, will not change your life. Hallelujah. What will change your life is stability and a good foundation in the house of God. The Bible said, those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish. Planted. Hallelujah. In the mighty. Not uprooted every time and plant somewhere, it gets dried up. That's why we have so much dried Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. So, sometimes we've got to hear the truth. So the truth can set us free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, yeah, we see an instruction was given. Chup, still follow instruction. Hallelujah. So you've got to find a priest or pastor who you need to have a covenant relationship with. Not someone who will prophesy or lay hands and then finish. Hallelujah. And never care about you after that. Amen. You must have a relationship and make that covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Amen. So strong. So the grace that is on the man of God flows onto you. Because the anointing flows from the top to the bottom. Amen. I, you didn't hear me. I said the anointing flows from the top to the bottom. Hallelujah. In the mighty. I am getting somebody either early next year in January of a very, very seasoned man. Allah is about 65 years that's going to speak from a father's heart. How to have a father and a son relationship. Amen. And how to tap on the anointing of the Father. Amen. Many of you are missing it because you don't know how to tap in the anointing of the Father. In the mighty name. I'm speaking to those that are online also. Amen. So, only the priesthood has the capacity and the power through God to neutralize the spiritual forces that gives Jericho its power and strength. Hallelujah. So Jericho had a wall, fortified city. The people were inside, but there was a power that was released to that city and to that walls. Hallelujah. And only the priest and the ark, the presence of God, had the power, amen, to crumble that city. So there are some grace that God has given to certain men and certain women of God that he has called, hallelujah, amen, that can, that can intervene in your life and destroy every stronghold that you are going through. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. You will pray and you will pray and you will pray 10 years and your prayers are not answered. Hallelujah. And you come and come into covenant with this man of God 
a real heart-to-heart covenant and just one prayer and you are set free. Just one prayer and you are set free. In the mighty name, I pray you, you understand spiritual dynamics. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that you are born again, that you understand spiritual dynamics. I will come to that just now. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. So today you are going to go around your walls, around your challenges. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus until it falls. You may be seated here right now and you feel that no, you cannot go. No, you can go in your spirit. Hallelujah. You can go in your belief system. You can go in trusting God and his word. You can go by trusting the man of God. That you can go whatever problem you are facing right now. Hallelujah. See yourself going six times round it. Hallelujah. See yourself that your pastor is in front of you. See yourself that God is leading you. Hallelujah. And go round it and on the seventh time shout. Even if you have to shout in your mind. See that walls crumbling down. And it will crumble down. It will crumble down. Hallelujah. Amen. So the battle that you are facing is not a physical battle. It needs a covenant. It needs a covenant. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it needs a covenant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So what the enemy stole from you. I pray that it comes back in multiplication. Hallelujah. Amen. The walls of Jericho crumbled. They took all the treasure belonging, everything that was in the city. They took it. Hallelujah. But it was fortified and everything was inside until God intervened, until the priest intervened. So when the priest intervened and when God intervened, hallelujah, all the treasures that were inside flooded to the children of God. There are things that the devil is holding that belongs to you. Hallelujah. There is a car that belongs to you. There is a house that belongs to you. There's a promotion that belongs to you. Those that are not married, there's a husband, there's a wife. Those that are barren, there's a child that belongs to you. Hallelujah. But there are gates, there are stoppages. uh, And I pray that when you enter into a covenant, uh, that those things will be destroyed by the power of God. And what is inside shall come to you. Hallelujah. And you shall embrace uh, your blessings in Jesus name so everything that the devil has remember I told you last week does not belong to him it's stolen hallelujah amen so stop by fighting battles physically you know how many people I counsel they are fighting battles physically with their friends, with their bosses, with their neighbors. And it's just getting worse with court cases and a whole lot of things. There are certain things, the root is spiritual. You need to have a covenant with the man of God, covenant with God, hallelujah, and let God fight your battle. Tell your neighbor, get stable. Plant roots. Hallelujah, amen. So, Ephesians 6 verse 12 And I'm almost closing. Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So listen to me church. We wrestle not against our neighbor. We wrestle not against our church leaders. We wrestle not against others and brothers and sisters. We wrestle not against our boss. We wrestle not against our government. We wrestle against demonic powers. Hallelujah. So if you're wrestling against your neighbor and your brother, your sister, your boss and all that, you're fighting a losing battle. Hallelujah. Amen. You're fighting a losing battle. First, go on your knees. Take it to the Lord. Allow the Lord to give you wisdom and instruction on how to fight your battles. As a Christian, most of your battles must be fought on your knees. 
Hallelujah. Before you start opening your mouth, hallelujah. Before you start engaging a lawyer, before you start getting some friends and families to back you up, hallelujah. You rather have God on your side because the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. The Bible says the enemy will come one way and flee seven ways. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No tongues raised shall stand. Hallelujah. The Bible says if God be with you, who can be against you? The Bible says the wicked draws the sword and they snarl at you, but the Lord laughs at them because the sword shall enter their own heart. Hallelujah. It's time to engage God in your battles. You make it more worse when you start fighting your oh you start getting your neighbors involved you start sending whatsapp messages one post after the other you put it on facebook i mean you're fighting with a sister there and you're putting on facebook for 1000 people to read so when you fight jericho physically you will never win Hallelujah. Amen. Let the ark fight it and be in covenant with your man of God. Hallelujah. Jericho held the treasure of the children of God. It was fortified. Nothing could come in and go out. Only a covenant could destroy it. Hallelujah. Only a covenant could release that treasure. You know how many people, everybody got my WhatsApp. I mean, most of the pastors don't do that. Hallelujah. The senior pastors don't give your WhatsApp to everybody. Oh, I, I've got 10,000 other people that uh, is on my subscriber list. I get three, 400 prayer requests a day. But the first preference I give to my congregation. And uh, some of you have never ever communicated with me. That shows that you have no covenant at all. I know who communicates with me always. I don't want you to communicate with me every week, no. But if you got a genuine prayer request, muni bang vies ni, muni scam vies. Introduce yourself. Send that request to me. Let me pray over it. Let me stand in the gap for you. Amen. Let me break whatever stronghold that is holding you from receiving your breakthrough become part of the house of god don't be a visitor become a son and a daughter become a partner of the ministry hallelujah and your blessing of this ministry will fall on you in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah amen so many of you are giving up on business Going back to work, started a business, is not working. Going back to work, nothing is working out. Divorcing and remarrying, having the same problem again, nothing working out. Running from profit to profit, nothing working out. You study, get a degree, you can't even get a good job. You buy a house, the house is there, the building is there, but no peace inside. You're running from partners to partners. But the partners are running away from you before you do, I do. Hallelujah. It's time to engage the ark and engage your pastor. Hallelujah. It's time to have a spiritual, hallelujah, connection, a spiritual covenant. Bless you. Spiritual covenant in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop making your pastor the last resort. Oh, come and do my marriage. Oh, oh, come and do, give me this or give me that or give me that. My name is Jimmy. Hallelujah. Have a covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Amen. Covenant relationship. Once you have a covenant relationship with your partner, hallelujah. If you sow in your, in your pastor's life, whatever grace is there, you receive the fruit of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is why whoever sows in my life is blessed. Hallelujah. In the, I'm not, I don't need your money. God has blessed me. Hallelujah. But the truth needs to be preached. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jericho is a stop sign. It's a closed door. I've got to finish this thing. Hallelujah. Can I take 10 minutes? I've got to finish this. So next week I'll finish with Jordan and I'm over. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 6 verse 1. Now Jericho was securely shut. 
are because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. 1 Samuel 2 verse 9. 1 Samuel 2 verse 9. He will guard the feet of his saints. Listen to me. He will guard the feet of his saints. But the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength no man shall prevail. Listen to that. By strength no man shall prevail. Hallelujah. You might be strong. You might be lifting up great heavy weights. Hallelujah. Amen. But that is nothing. It can do no dent in the spiritual kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. You will never prosper just by doing things physically. Hallelujah. It's important to do things physically. It's important to study. It's important to grow yourself, mature. But this world, we are fighting against rulers and principalities and powers. Only time you can win is when you have a covenant relationship covenant relationship you are battling to try to open doors hallelujah you got beautiful business cards i know people got beautiful business cards lovely website uh, and and good brochures hallelujah amen but there's no business coming you buy the best business suits you wear the best business clothes you wear the good outfits everything hallelujah but no business is coming up hallelujah you prepare your cv so well you even bribe people hallelujah amen you give them the bright face and biryani hallelujah amen but nothing comes your way nothing works out hallelujah because Jericho is shut Jericho is shut you can even pay tithes and it's still shut because God has ordained covenants God has ordained covenants hallelujah once you're in covenant relationship hallelujah amen the grace that is on your man of God can open that door in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm talking from experience for the last 30 years I'm preaching. Hallelujah. I've spoken with great, great men of God all over the world. I've spoken with people, thousands, tens of thousands of people that have come and told me that they have been praying, they have been fasting, they have been doing this and nothing been working out. And one prayer from you and the door opened. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm an ordinary man just like you. There's nothing different in me. But what I carry is the grace of God. Amen. The calling of God is upon my life. Amen. So you've got to honor the calling of God. Hallelujah. If outside there you're listening to me on online, you've got to honor the calling of God on your man, your woman of God. Hallelujah. It works all over just like that. Same. Amen. So I'm not only preaching for our church. I'm preaching for those that's going to listen. Go and respect and honor your man of God. And make a covenant. And you'll see your prayer being answered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's spiritual. Hallelujah. Amen. It's spiritual. You've got to get God involved. You've got to get your pastor involved. Hallelujah. Amen. So I know many of you love Jesus. I know many of you are born again. But you've got to understand God's protocol. Hallelujah. You've got to understand covenants. Amen. You've got to understand why God created the local church. You've got to understand that. Listen to this very, very carefully. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Listen. Having their understanding darkened. This is talking about Christians. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Hallelujah. Having their heart darkened. Paul speaking to the church and letting them know that their understanding is darkened. You can be saved and born again, but still be darkened in your understanding relating to how God works. Hallelujah. You are a Christian. You know how to come to church. You know how to lift up your hands and praise God. You know how to worship. You know all that. But your understanding can be darkened relating to covenants and relating to God's protocol and relating to how God operates. These were church people. 
And Paul was addressing it, hallelujah. Many people are born again, but they don't have a relationship with God. They have no relationship with the pastor, hallelujah. They don't belong to a local church, amen. They are not in submission uh, to leadership, hallelujah, amen. You don't have to have a conversation with your pastor, hallelujah, but you can have a covenant relationship. If you've gone outside, somebody invites you, Hallelujah. And say, let's go and fellowship. There's a prophet coming there. Amen. He can prophesy. He can tell you what underwear you wear. Sorry, that's what's happening. Hallelujah. You say, no, I've got a covenant relationship with my house of God. I know everything that I need is in my house. Hallelujah. The same God that is there is here. Hallelujah. When you have a covenant relationship. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Covenant relation, then you start receiving from the grace. Because you have a covenant relationship. Nobody can tempt you and influence you and make you unstable, hallelujah. And misplace and displace you, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. So you don't have to have a conversation every time with a pastor. You can have a covenant relationship. You need to honor the grace. Step into the anointing. Sow in his life. Make his job easy. You have one person to take care of. The pastor has thousands of people. And somebody gets so angry because I didn't answer your message today. I took two days to answer your message. You got so angry. Not realizing that you only got your wife to look after. I got thousands of people. On a daily basis. Hallelujah. When you have a covenant relationship. You have a father and son and a daughter relationship. You'll say no my father knows and he will come back to me. Let me pray for him. When you have that relationship. The grace that God has put on my head comes upon you. In the mind. Because when you speak about a man of God. In your closet he hears. He is in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Elijah said, I will not leave you. I will not leave you, Elijah. That's relationship. That's covenant. Hallelujah. Amen. You are going to Jericho and Jericho is opposition. You're going to fight battles there, but I will fight the battle with you. I will be back to back with you. Hallelujah. No matter what, I will not destabilize myself. I will not allow gossip to get into me. I will not allow negative to get into me. I will stand with you. I will pull through with you. Hallelujah. What you go through, I will go through with you. You, I have your back. Covenant relationship. Covenant relationship. Hallelujah. We will destroy the walls together. So remember church. The devil don't really stop many to rise. Let me, this is an important point. I want you to remember this. And I'm closing. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't stop people to rise. He knows and he knows you. He knows that your promotion will destroy you. He allows people to get successful. He allows people to get good jobs when they are in church. Remove them from the team here. He allows it because he knows that that success will destroy you. Because you don't have the character to keep it. So many people from the church, they move into high positions. Next thing they're driving a good car. Living in a good house. Oh, I bought a good house. And they make sure the church knows it also. Publish it. And after six months, they're on begging street. Because the devil will allow you to climb the ladder. Because he knows on top there, you don't have the character to maintain it. But with Christ now, he will build your character first before he blesses you. Because when he blesses you, you can handle your house. You can handle your car. You can handle your possession. Because you have a strong character. So don't avoid the process. Don't skip the process. Don't rush the process. Go with the process. And the best shall come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. (laughs) 
So, getting back to Elisha, Elisha knew his destiny was to receive a double portion, hallelujah. That is why he was determined to overcome rejection, overcome barriers. He was determined at all costs to be in covenant relationship with his destiny helper, with his spiritual father. Though Elisha once again tried to convince him to remain in Bethel, Elisha responded, I will not leave you. I believe that deep inside of Elisha, there was a silent joy. The mentor, the father, there was a silent joy. And he said, oh, now I know that I've got a great son that can take over from me. He hasn't got an attitude. He never become negative. He never turned against me. He never got a victim mentality when I told him to stay. He said, no, I will follow you. Because he knew that his destiny was linked to his spiritual father. And I believe Elijah, the father was joyful inside and say now I know that I have a son I tested him in every way and I did not get an attitude and I believe now he's ready to take the double portion of anointing that God has given me hallelujah tell your neighbor anointing does not come easy it comes with sacrifice and discipline in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah so what did Elijah say oh now I have found a prophet who is emotionally stable I found a prophet who can handle stress and emotions I found a prophet that is not driven by feelings hallelujah amen I found a prophet that can handle and be responsible with God's work in Jesus mighty name let's stand in the presence of God double portion of anointing does not come easy the Lord has a test for each one of us. The Lord has a test for each one of us. I know the sermon was a bit long, but I needed to finish it. How much are you willing to sacrifice to walk into the full blessings of God? I prayed for my son. I prayed for my daughter. I pray for them on a daily basis daily basis I put my God to the test I put my God to the test I pray daily listen to me Lester Moy if you are faithful with God God is faithful with you many of you are lacking because of your unfaithfulness your doors are not opening and for this four part, part four of the sermon that I preached, it's on my Facebook. I think downloaded on uh, YouTube also. If you can listen to it again and practice it, 2023 will be your best year. People are looking for partners in clubs. Oh, I want a husband. So let me go to the club. I want a wife, let me go to the club. That's why when they get married, they're just clubbers only. Oh, let me go to this dating site or that dating site. Let me tell you, God can give you because the day you were created, God knows who's meant for you. Because of our impatience, we end up with the wrong people. I prayed. I mean, look at all the beautiful people that is here. Some people will say, will you find so many beautiful people in Langlata? Because this was a, a beer den before. 
This was the brewery before. Different spirit was here. Now is the Holy Spirit. I prayed for my daughter that her husband will come to the church. And her husband came to the church. And they got married here. Now my son is going to get married from the church. His wife came from the church, grew up here. They don't have to go and look in Santon for a wife or a husband. They don't have to go and look. They never ever shifted from the church. Their life is in the church and everything came in the church. My granddaughter will find her husband in the church. I prophesied that. So some of you are not married. I pray and I prophesy it will come in the church. Nothing is impossible. You got to trust God with all your heart and walk in covenant. So I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. That no devil in hell will be able to take what belongs to you. Those that are uncertain about your health, you will not die before your time. You don't know the Pharaoh that you are facing. Hallelujah. But God knows and he'll fight your battle. So when God gets ready to get you out, no Pharaoh can stand his presence. What did he use to destroy the Pharaoh and the Egyptian? He used lice, frogs, locusts, blood. He will use anything to fight your battle. God will use your enemy to bring you out. He does not care who or what he used. He will use the same person who curses you to turn around and bless you. Don't ever get in the way of somebody whose trust is in God. So I pray today that you trust God with all your needs and desires and don't shift from trusting Him. When the people were not letting the Egyptian, when, and the Egyptian were not letting the children of God go, hallelujah. He said, I will close up your wombs. Let my people go and worship me. He said to Pharaoh, it's time now. Let my people go. So I pray it is time now that God will intervene and the devil must let go in the name of Jesus. Enough of oppression, enough of poverty, enough of closed doors. In the mighty name of Jesus. The set time for favor, I declare, is upon you. You have heard to the word of God. You have come into the presence of God. You have a covenant relationship. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop now from the walls to break down. It's a new season. I declare your miracle is on its way. I declare before December, hallelujah, that your prayer will be answered. I declare your commitment that you make with God will be honored when God answers your prayer. Remember, you belong to the most powerful family, the family of God. Hallelujah. The healing, bondage breaking, yoke destroying, favorful family. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah in the presence of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting out of my dry season. I'm getting into my new season. Those that are online also. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As we partake of the emblem. As we partake of the emblem. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. My body that was broken for your healing. My blood that was shed for your forgiveness. Can I have another one please?
my blood that was shed for your forgiveness. Take a moment now and just let your mind run through all the stoppages, blockages in your life. What you need healing from, your wound, emotional wounds, abuse, rejection, abandonment, uncertainty, fear, depression, despondency, whatever is inside of you that you need healing. Now is the time to ask God, Lord, touch my heart and heal me. What is your weakness? What is causing you to go to Gilgal every year? That cyclical pattern, the circle of your life. What is stopping you from going to battle and making a commitment with God, your priorities? What is stopping you to face your opposition, your Jericho? Right now, you bring it to God and allow God to forgive you first, to cleanse you and to heal you and to give you the strength and boldness to overcome. So 2023 will be a new year, a year of divine harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. You're more than a conqueror. You can conquer your challenges. You can overcome. Don't allow anybody to tell you and limit you in the mighty name of Jesus. God has the best for you. He has the best for you because you are God's best. When he looks at you, he marvels you. He takes glory out of you through the blood of Jesus. He's not standing to stop you and close doors on you. No, he wants to favor you. But he wants you to make that covenant. As I told you, I'm going to be preaching on covenant. I'll be preaching on covenant. And you'll understand the depths of covenant. And how powerful covenant. When, when, when David made a covenant with Jonathan, they cut together and they mixed the blood. The covenant was so strong that David honored that covenant and Jonathan was dead. He still honored the covenant and he went and got Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, and made him sit at the table with the king. A covenant can raise you up. A covenant can raise you up. A covenant, if you are forgotten, a covenant will pull you and bring you back in royalty. God operates through covenant. And if you can get that today in your head and your heart, I'm telling you, your battle is over in the name of Jesus. I don't preach anything yet for self-glory or anything. I preach everything that the Holy Spirit tells me so that you can be educated. The Bible says, my people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Let's partake and receive your healing. In the name of Jesus. Partake of the blood and receive your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. Amen. Church, uh, the, the, this word will be on my Facebook I've got a Facebook called Ryan Suknanen and also on Glory Divine World Ministries Facebook. Then it will be downloaded or uploaded on YouTube also. Listen to it and ask God strength so you can practice it. I don't want anybody to struggle in 2023 because our God is a miracle working God. He answers prayers. And may the Lord answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Just let's meet here on Tuesday. Don't stop coming on Tuesday. It's midweek to feed your soul and your spirit. Let's meet you on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Don't forget the groceries. Start bringing groceries from Tuesday, Sunday, whatever you can bring. If you don't have, you don't have. There's no force. There's no obligation. Amen. So let us make those packs and I will be getting prices if you know of people that are selling groceries at uh, somewhere that is 
at bulk beside macro and things, let me know and uh, so we can buy a whole lot of groceries and then we will make the parcels. Amen. Let's stand. I pray the love of God, the peace of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you till we meet again in Jesus' name. God richly bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen. We invite you to become a partner in our global ministry which is touching lives and transforming situations all over the world. When you become a partner, you are investing in fertile soil and the Lord will richly reward you with heaven's best. Church banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to sow a seed of honor, directly deposit it into Dr. Ryan's personal account. For e-wallets, apps like Cash Send, Standard Bank Instant Money or any other instant cash services, kindly use our church WhatsApp number to send the voucher number as well as collection pin. Because when you sow in good soil, indirectly your money is going to places where you cannot go. When you partner with the Kingdom Vision, God will make sure that your needs are provided for. So sow your seed today.